Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Very excited because I just finished repairing the XFX board that I took a look at several videos ago. And with the board repaired, I can finally finish building my uh, ultimate 2008 gaming system that I've had in the works for months. So, uh, before I even get into the computer, I'm going to go through what it took to repair this board because it was incredibly difficult, although it initially didn't seem like it. Now I thought this would be a very easy repair, but it was exactly the opposite. I thought it would maybe be 30 minutes to just replace these caps, but a lot of small things, a lot of minor factors combined, made this the most difficult repair I've ever done, and also the messiest looking solder job I've ever done. Now that three hours was not out of incompetence. I'm pretty good at soldering, although I'm definitely not a professional. That was out of just how difficult it was to desolder and resolder these caps. So the problems with desoldering them were, it was like two main things. Old solder, so the flux has dried up so it doesn't flow very well. It's also low grade, unleaded solder. So it, you know, it's not the highest quality solder, so it doesn't flow very well because of that either. And there's a big ground plane right on the capacitors. So that soaks up the heat, but I don't want to leave the iron on it for too long uh, for, you know, not wanting to damage the board because obviously this is a pretty rare board and I paid a good amount of money for it and I don't want to break it. So what I had to do was pull the capacitors out from the top, then clip the leads from under the capacitors and then solder them from the top of the board. The only way I was able to even get the solder out of the hole is I, I held the board like this and I had my girlfriend pull the leads out as I was heating the solder from the other side of the board with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers. So that just took a, an inordinate amount of time, but I'm very glad that it is finished. I haven't even tested the board yet. I just remembered I'm gonna go do that really quickly because I don't wanna build a PC with a board that doesn't work. All right, it seems to work. I got a post beep out of it. So uh, I think it's all good to go. I went ahead and installed our CPU. It's a Q9650, it's just a regular old Q9650, not a core two quad extreme, just, you know, Q9650. Because I really don't need an unlocked multiplier, I'm not going to be doing any crazy overclocking on this board. Might bump the front side bus up by, you know, a few megahertz to get a little bit of extra performance out of the sky, but nothing too crazy. All right, it's time for the case. It's the case I've put like 10 PC builds in. If you're relatively new to the channel, you may not know the mods that I have made to this case, but on the front here, it actually has a small LCD screen and uh, I can hook it up with these video cables to the graphics card and I can get a small display on the front of the screen. Uh, it really has no practical use, but I like it because it's cool. So I'm going to get all of that hooked up later, but for now I'm just going to shove the cables aside. Time to actually put the board in the case, because the board isn't new, obviously. Oh yeah, that's something I figured out pretty quickly. The board is not brand new. It's definitely been used, and it was just put back in the box very well. But because I don't have all the like original screws and stuff, I am going to need to just dig through my box of screws and find some motherboard screws. I already put standoffs in all the holes that do need standoffs, 
So that shouldn't be too hard. Oh, actually, first I should probably put in our power supply. Just using a 500 watt EVGA unit, decently reliable. Don't really need more than 500 watts here, even with the SLI GPUs that I'm running. They're not too hard on the power supply. Here's the box of accessories that came with the motherboard. I'm definitely going to be using some of those as they're quite nice. I very, I very rarely actually use IO shields because on most of the computers I work on, like for my job, they're integrated into the case. Like most pre-built PCs, it's just built into the case. So I don't have a reason to install an IO shield. Oh, what I should do before I install the board is put on the back plate for the cooler. Did I, did I do it? There we go. Okay, I think I think that's it. I think we're good. Yeah, all our I.O. looks to be aligned up correctly. That is fantastic. All right, time to start screwing it in. This should be our last screw, and uh, now the board will be nice and secure in the case. I recall this cooler being very close to the um, power supply. Yeah, that is extremely close. <laughs> I believe that will fit. I think I'll run all those cables under the SATA cable to just hold them in place. But yeah, I've learned my lesson the hard way. Always install your front panel I.O stuff before you put in GPUs and uh, other big cards that will obstruct these because uh, if you don't do these pretty much at the start of the build they become incredibly difficult to do later on. That's just a, a tip for those of you watching. That applies to pretty much any system not just old ones. Uh, we've got speaker. Does this even have a speaker header? <laughs> That's a serial port. There are so many fan headers here. I am not used to seeing this many fan headers on a, on a board. Yeah, um, I don't know if this has a speaker front panel header. But that's fine because it has a speaker on the motherboard, so like a little piece of buzzer, so I don't need one. Okay, now we have these weird USB connectors that are all split out, and um, where's our front USB? Here it is. Now I think it's hard drive time. Now I've picked two WDRE3 500 gig. These are relatively period accurate. These drives were made in 2010. Uh, I could have gone and bought like 2008 hard drives, but really no point. Now I am just going to <sighs> Sorry, the video cable in this case really does complicate cable management. Cable management was not really as much of a thing uh, in this era, so old cases just do not have places to put cables. Like they have, of course, places you can put cables, but nowhere that's specially designed with the sole purpose of holding your cables. Oh yeah, top bit is only for floppy drive, so I'll have to put the hard drive here. And uh, I'll stick the other hard drive right there. 
I would put them all the way at the bottom of the case, but there's a fan there. And of course, having your fan blocked by two hard drives is not ideal. Wouldn't make the cooling in this case any better, for sure. Okay, I'll finish screwing these in from the back a little later, but there are our two hard drives, and, uh, well, actually, I could fit another without touching the fan, and I prepared this just in case. Let's get some extra speed. What? Where is the screw? Oh, that bothers me so much. Your third hard drive has to be installed like that. But it sticks out further. Else the screws just don't line up. Oh, that hurts my soul. But, um, it's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, screw this guy in. Because why would I not want to run three hard drives for three times the speed, three times the seek performance, and one-third the reliability? Because this is all period-accurate stuff. Oh no, I'm not using any SSDs. Screw SSDs. Alright, it's time for the big guns. These are two Quadro FX 4800s. I probably didn't have to clarify that I had two of them, because you can clearly see that there are indeed two of them. But these cars would have cost, I believe it was $1,800 each when they were new in uh, 2008. For this build, god damn it. Am I not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to use that third hard drive. Okay, uh, yeah. Time to take out that third hard drive, I guess. But for this build, I was originally going to use two 9800 GTXs. But I ultimately decided against it for several reasons. Okay, yeah, I just didn't want to knock out that capacitor that I had replaced on the board because it is not very securely soldered. Because again, I had to solder like half of these to the top of the board, which is uh, not what you're supposed to do, but it was the only thing that would work. And it looks like that capacitor is going to obstruct our graphics card. So where can I bend this shit? Well, uh, it broke. It's on the floppy connector, so uh, I won't be using the floppy connector. But that's really unfortunate. <laughs> okay, I'm also going to have to take off this little support bit because uh, I don't need it. Man, that sucks about that capacitor though. I will try and re-solder that. But yeah, what was I, what was I saying? Oh yes, 9800 GTX. I was gonna use two 9800 GTXs, but these cards released only a few months later. They perform just about the same. They're a lot cheaper on eBay. They don't suffer from the solder ball issues that the 9800 GTXs do. So uh, hopefully they're a lot less prone to just randomly dying out of nowhere like uh, both of my 8000 series based cards did. Okay, are you gonna slot in? Very nice. Okay, that's a pretty card. If I can figure out how to get power to it, that is, because, um, yeah, there are so many things that I just did not even account for in this build. I'll have to run our USB cables there so they don't obstruct 
the other cables. And I'll have to get a non-locking SATA cable for that port. Wait, didn't this board come with SATA cables? Yeah, yeah, really nice SATA cables. So I'll just use the really nice SATA cables this board came with instead of my own because, uh, yeah, might as well use the original stuff anyway. Dang. Like, why, why would you need a cap on a SATA cable? But at the same time, it's really nice. And it's really cool. Okay, here we go. Okay, SATA cables and SATA ports for hard drives. This is all SATA 2, I believe. Is above the GPU, which is good because uh, we won't have to deal with running cables around our massive graphics cards. We'll just plug them straight in here. And also the fact that these uh, SATA cables are 90 degrees at the end is uh, really convenient because, again, they won't obstruct our graphics cards from going in. Okay, uh, I apologize for anyone who is into like super clean cable management because I'm not like a, a super, you know, I'm not really passionate about cable management. I don't lie awake at night thinking about how good my cable runs are, but even I can recognize that that is uh, really bad, to put it bluntly. I've returned. While charging my camera batteries, I did some minor work off camera, stuff that wouldn't be too interesting. I uh, connected a fan. I put thermal paste on the CPU. I screwed in the GPUs. Uh, I think I, did I add that one on camera? No, I added that GPU, uh, it wasn't very eventful. There was nothing cool there. Um, screwed on that CPU cooler and it was miserable. It took a good like 10 minutes just to mount this cooler. And it, it really sucks because it's a nice cooler but the mounting is just awful. And when I say it's awful, I mean, if I was put in a situation that, for some reason, I had to choose between sacrificing my family and mounting one of those, I would seriously consider sacrificing my family. But it's, <laughs> again, it's a nice cooler and I like it, but it is just so inconvenient to mount. You're kidding. Okay, um... What is it hitting? Oh, it's too close to the power supply, so if I just bend the fan a little... I'll be working on that. I will be working on that, trust me. So just in normal operation, it shouldn't vibrate. It's a very oddly constructed cooler. And while we're on the topic of cooling, I've decided against using this little fan. Because the bearing has died, and, uh... You know, no fault of the fan. It's just a small fan that's 15 years old. So of course the bearing is gonna leak and die. So although it is nice for cooling that chipset, it makes the worst sound imaginable. So in its place I've just plugged in this fan instead of, you know, making an adapter to run the cable all around the case and like all that mess. So I'm, I'm going to keep this fan because it's cool and I may eventually want to use it if I can re-lubricate the bearing, but in its current state I am going to say this is unusable. Like I just cannot stand to be in the same room as this thing. What I think I'm going to do now is install our RAM. Now I have four sticks of Crucial Ballistics DDR2-1066. That's right, I said DDR2-1066, not DDR3. This is just crazy, wacky, overclocked DDR2 that runs at DDR3 speeds. And although 1066 megahertz may not sound like a lot nowadays, back in the day, this was absolutely insane. All right, there we go, we've got our four RAM sticks installed. 
Now I say it's time for the sound card. Now this is a uh, Creative Labs SB0460. It is a, uh, let's see, what are you? I think this is a Sound Blaster X-Fi Extreme Music series. Not the highest end card out there, also not the worst. It's a pretty decent little card. Now I originally was going to use a Sound Blaster Fatality, the X5 Fatality, and I was psyched about that, but uh, then I went to go test the card that I had bought, and it killed my engineering sample HD5870 that was in the slot above it, and then proceeded to uh, not even work. So now there is a burn mark on the PCI slot of my old 775 board, and uh, I'm left with a not working sound card and now non-functional rare GPU. So that is a, uh, I guess, words of warning for if you buy some hardware that's untested, don't test it in a system with valuable stuff. Although, I did get the fatality front panel, and this is the really cool rare bit, and uh, I paid like 40 bucks for the card that ended up killing my GPU, and I mean, I'm not even that mad because I can fix the GPU, but I can't just make one of these appear. These are quite rare. You get your inputs and outputs on the front, you get little controls, and I forgot to plug in the big ribbon cable. It connects to your sound card with this, uh, this mess right here. The amount of airflow that that second quadro gets, or rather doesn't get, is uh, kind of bothering me, to be completely honest. Let's see. Also, they designed this cable in the dumbest way. Let me show you what I mean once I get it plugged in. Yeah, it plugs in like that, and then the cable comes out that way. Like, why not flip it around and have the cable come out the other way? That would make so much more sense. But no. Also, another graphics card, because why not? This is an NVS 310. I've been thinking of installing this in case I want to do, like, PhysX. And this would just be an extra GPU for that. So I'm really tempted to just stick this in the slot. But I don't know if I'll A, need it, or B, my main concern is that with three cards installed, the PCIe only runs at 8x instead of 16x. So actually, I think I'm going to hold off on this until I get everything working. And then uh, if I can make sure that it won't be slowing these down, then I might install it. Oh, this SLI bridge came with the motherboard. It's my first time using one of these. There we go. Just snapping it down onto our cards, and uh, there we go. I probably should have installed this mess before the GPUs, but this is the uh, the video box that runs the internal little uh, video display. I custom made this little Molex adapter that allows me to run both the video box, which is designed to be USB powered, and the screen, which just needs 12 volts, off of the 12 volt and 5 volt of the Molex from the internal power supply. So then it doesn't use any of your USB ports. You don't need to plug anything additional into the wall. Uh, it just runs straight from the PC power supply. I don't think that will cause any short circuits and kill anything. I sure hope it doesn't, at least. Uh, I'm gonna need a longer HDMI cable than six inches. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and install that NVS card because I'll be able to quickly tell if it's not running at the correct PCIe speeds and uh, remove it before I install the driver.
Damn, I sure hope nothing in this system ever breaks because taking this thing apart to replace anything will be an absolute nightmare. But there we go. There's like all the major stuff installed. Is that in fact everything done? No, I should plug in the CPU power and also the SATA power to our CD drive. Or sorry, a DVD drive. I've crammed so many cables up here that I'm actually running out of space to cram more cables there. All right, I think my camera may have turned off, but it is time for the first post test. I'm not sure how much of the previous recording it caught, but I haven't turned it on yet. I just plugged in keyboard, mouse, and power. We've got all the stuff installed. This thing is incredibly heavy. I mean, as I would expect it to be. I think just the first GPU needs to be plugged in. Okay, power supply coming on. Don't explode, please. All right. We've halted at C1. So that probably is like a RAM thing. I am going to check that out. One of our memory sticks didn't feel very securely seated. So let's try that again. And also our CPU fan is rattling as you could hear. I think I might have fixed the rattle. Was that it? I think that was it. Ooh. Why are we not getting video though? Come on. Yes! Oh, okay. It's recognizing our drives. We're getting a message that says floppy disks fail. Uh, I don't know if that's just because I don't have a floppy drive plugged in or if the, uh, that's because the capacitor broke near the floppy drive connector. Oh. I'm so glad it works. I want to see the whole post sequence because I think it displays a cool S XFX logo. Yes. Beautiful. I love this so much. Okay, and I think that's where I'm gonna leave off this video because it's already been long enough. I've been filming for over an hour. I'm gonna install an operating system, maybe get some benchmarks running. Okay, the super loud fans are the ones on the GPU. I will, uh, see if there's anything I can do about that because it sounds like a jet engine. But yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave off this video. Let's see if it's got any uh, overclocking here. Advanced chipset, yes. Okay, so there's our uh, overclocking features. But that's where I'm gonna leave this video off Thank you everyone so much for watching. I am crazy excited about this board. Chipset's already getting pretty hot, so I guess that's why they have that fan. 
But thanks everyone for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you next time.